Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Katrin Bangum, and I'm from Norway, but uh, now I'm based in uh, Copenhagen, uh, and that's because I'm from the 1st of January, uh, started in a job in the Nordic Council of Ministers, where I'm responsible for a program of integrating uh, refugees and immigrants. And also, I'm responsible for a program uh, that's called Program for Democracy, Inclusion and Safety. And I will tell you a little bit about both of these uh, programs. In the autumn of 2015, the Nordic countries experienced a large flow of refugees. The impact of this flow will be felt strongly in many years to come. And in the aftermath, the countries experience big challenges in integrating the newcomers to our Nordic societies. It is more important than ever to have effective and inclusive policies which make sure that newly arrived refugees will be fully integrated at an early stage. And with proactive and evidence-based approaches, we can not only manage migration, but also benefit from it. Working together closely in numerous policy areas, the Nordic countries have strong tradition of knowledge sharing and cooperation, which also apply to challenges related to integration of refugees. Policymakers need to take stock of the successful and the unsuccessful experiences accumulated in the Nordic countries and help the best ideas to scale up. And therefore, the Nordic Ministers of Cooperation initiated the Cooperation Program for Integration of Refugees and Migrants in 2016. The goal of the program is to support the countries in their effort to integrate newcomers through effective measures and policies. It is important to identify existing Nordic cooperation and share Nordic knowledge and experiences by bringing stakeholders in the field together. The program has also involved different Nordic institutions in their work. And the two most important institutions are the Nordic Center of Welfare and Social Issues and the Nord Regio, and they are both in Stockholm. The program of integrating refugees and migrants consists of four main elements. It's establishing a clearing center, and it is to provide further knowledge, and we also are financing projects, and it is cooperation between, between ministers. Uh, the Nordic Council of Ministers has set up a clearing center, which shall serve as an ID bank and spread knowledge on integration. And it is the two Nordic institutions that are responsible for this center. It's the Nordic Center of Welfare and Social Issues and the Nord Regio. The task of the clearing center is to collect, develop and spread knowledge in the Nordic countries to support the integration effort. They will facilitate a network between important stakeholders in the regions, including practitioners, researchers, authorities, and NGOs. The network will in initiate seminars and conferences with the purpose of exchanging information, knowledge, and good examples. And they are also to launch a website very soon. And this year, the Clearing Center will focus on four main topics. Early integration of refugees in the labor market, 
and two, immigrants and refugees' role in developing the rural areas in the Nordic regions. And then I can inform you that at the 4th of May, the Clearing Center will organize a seminar in Luleå in Sweden together with other stakeholders. And they will focus on migrants' role in developing rural areas in the Nordic region. The third main topic is education for newly arrived children and youth. And the fourth issue is segrega segregation in big cities. All of these themes are highly important uh, in the effort to integrate immigrants and refugees both nationally and in the local community. The second element in the, the program is to facilitate processes to provide further resource-based knowledge. It is very uh, soon to be released a report initiated by Nordforsk, which will give an overview of the last year's research in the integration field. And Nordforsk, Nordforsk is also planning a new comprehensive research program on integration to provide further research-based knowledge. They are now in the process to find out if there are interest in this kind of program and to find sources of financing the program. And also in this program, we have some funds to finance projects uh, in the different Nordic countries. The funds are to support the priorities of the Nordic ministers and can, can be given to different stakeholders working in the field of integration. And the last element of the program is a cooperation between the Nordic ministers responsible for integration. At the 25th of November in 2016, they met in Copenhagen uh, for the first time. They discussed challenges and issues of common interests. They also exchanged experiences on policies and measures. And the ministers plan to meet again to discuss further and to learn from each other. Under the Norwegian presidency in the Nordic Council of Ministers this year, the Norwegian ministers of integration plan to invite her fellow ministers to an informal meeting in September this year. Under the two past uh, years, the different sectors in the Nordic Council of Ministers have undertaken different initiatives. Under the Finnish presidency last year, the role of culture and civil society integration in the integration process was highlighted. The 7th and 8th of December last year, it was held a big conference in Helsinki. And under the Norwegian presidency this year, they continued the Finnish initiative. And it was a conference now the 28th of March in Oslo, which discussed how the culture and civil society can play an important role in integrating the refugees both nationally and in their municipalities. The Norwegian presidency has also taken two other initiatives. The 2nd and 3rd of May, they will host a conference in Oslo titled Nordic Conference on Kindergarten and Schools as Arenas for Inclusion and Democratic Citizenship. In the follow-up to this conference, the Nordic Council of Ministers and the Clearing Center will continue to facilitate the distribution of knowledge about what measures and policies that are most effective to secure newly arrived children and youth the best possible education. And the 13th of June, it will be held an other big Nordic conference on labor market inclusion of refugees. The conference will focus on key strat strategic elements for a successful labor market and social integration related to both policymaking and service provision. 
And also, the Nordic statistical authorities will cooperate to work to harmonize some of the Nordic statistics in the integration field. This will be helpful to give us the possibili possibility to compare the development between the Nordic countries and to learn from each other. I would also like to tell you a little bit about another initiative by the Nordic Council of Ministers, uh, which is also is highly relevant to the integration issues. And that is the program of democracy, inclusion and safety. An important part of this program is a network called Nordic Safe Cities. This network of cities from all the Nordic countries is working actively to ensure trustful, tolerant and resilient cities uh, with the ambition to prevent radicalization and violent extremism. The network aims to provide Nordic cities with tools and new solutions uh, uh, which they can use in this important work. The Safe Cities Network was initiated in 2015 by the Nordic Council of Ministers as a reaction to the attack in Copenhagen. And Norway experienced the attack of Utøya some years ago. And many European cities have experienced terrorist attacks in the recent years. Democracy is deeply rooted in the Nordic countries. We respect fundamental human rights and freedoms. We are, to a large degree, open-minded, trustful and tolerant. But in recent years, these values have been challenged by these attacks and acts of terrorism. The attacks have threatened the very essence of our societies we have built, over trust in each other and over freedom of life. And the network work to prevent that of a society close in on itself and being excluding societies where people become suspicious of each other and where we ultimately become less tolerant of other people. And the network has hosted three Nordic conferences in 2016, focusing on different issues. Uh, for example, safe urban spaces, safe online spare, strong families, safe public institution, and strong youth engagement. And the 7th of March this year, the Safe City hosted a big conference launching a Nordic Safe Cities guide, and that happened in Copenhagen. And the guide is containing best practice from across the Nordic cities in their effort to battle radicalization and violent extremism. 13 majors from different cities in the Nordic region participated together with, among others, the Lord Major of Copenhagen and the French ambassador to Denmark. And the network will also host different events in 2017, and they will focusing on youth engagement and dialogue between religious and other actors in the civil society. So lastly, I will emphasize that integrating refugees and including the newcomers in our local and national communities is a vital task in the years to come. Our welfare state will become under pressure if we do not succeed in getting people into the workforce. It is necessary to encourage and enable an early employment and education participation. And it's also important to emphasize an opportunity-based mindset when we are working in this field. Well-designed integration policies and measures, strengthening social belonging, can promote sustainable growth and be a competitive asset. If we manage to have policies and measures to include and integrate newcomers, I think we will be stronger societies we will be able to use our new fellow citizen to contribute to build our welfare states and contribute to a more diverse 
and exciting society. Our joint effort in the Nordic countries in this field will help us to make this a success story, I hope. And that's also the, the goal of this program, is to help the Nordic countries so the integration uh, policy should be a success for uh, all our societies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, we have uh, time for uh, one, two, three questions. Do we have any? Any from the audience, any questions? I have one. You mentioned that the tolerance has slightly changed during the, uh, during the, the last years in the, because of this refugee crisis and these events. So, I have been in Denmark, and at least in the 90s, they were one of the most tolerant nations, I guess, in, in Europe. And if you measure the tolerance there from 0 to 10, the so Danes were very close to 10, let's say 9 in this scale. How much, and I guess Norway is, was more or less the same, how much this has now changed if you measure in a 10 point scale? Oh, gosh, that's difficult. <laughs> That's difficult, but, but um, I think that the trend is that in some ways we have been less tolerant. And I mean, it was a shift in the, the Danish uh, society, and uh, in some ways it has been maybe a shift in the Norwegian society uh, too. So I think it is a kind of fear in the societies because we uh, experienced in 2015 a lot of people coming. And I think uh, that uh, meant that people felt a bit of fear because it was coming so many. And people feel in some ways a bit threatened about the uh, Scandinavian values and so. So I think that it's really important to take these, uh, these scares seriously. And uh, I think it is important to work and to have a dialogue with all people in the societies. And also I think it's very uh, important that people meet each other. The refugees coming, meeting the people uh, living in the community, and I think then we will uh, contribute to a more tolerant, uh, because we get to know each other, and that is promoting a more tolerant society. So that was a good answer. Not <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, any more questions? That is one question, please. Thank you. I'm Christina Heike from the University of Helsinki. Um, uh, I was thinking of this question already um, after Ms. Mrs. Foti's intervention, but I think it also uh, goes well with, with what you just told us about the upcoming Nordic events. And this is, Mrs. Foti was uh, so much underlining the role, central role of, of social partners. And, and this leaves me with a question of, of uh, whether either of you have good examples of it, because uh, from what I recall from the public discussion in my country, Finland, it is a very, very tricky question, because the, the trade unions are in order not to create two different work, uh, levels of workforce, they, um, I, I overheard a panel where the, the new immigrants, or the refugees or Asylum seekers who were in Finland, they were proposing a, uh, having a job with less pay because of not knowing the Finnish language and that because they say they feel strongly that they cannot work up to 100% and they are not expecting 100% uh, 100% uh, pay for what they, they do. But this was a very, very <laughs> difficult question for the labor unions because they say that if the answer is if we now start paying less for newcomers, it will mean less pay for the Finns in the future, etc. So I would very much appreciate your comments on how you see this role of, of social partners in this. You know, the, the, the question you are uh, raising about uh, the wage issue is really sensitive. And it has been a discussion in, uh, in, I think, all the Nordic countries about 
should you do something about the wage sheet? Uh, yeah, I don't exactly know the, um, that it has been talking about that uh, uh, you could uh, have less uh, earnings for the refugees so they can easily get into the labor market. But in most of the Nordic countries, uh, the governments don't want to do that. Uh, it's a lot of uh, negative sides uh, with that, and it's a big political issue. So what is more they are talking about now is the subsidy of wages. That's what they do in the Nordic countries now. Now they give subsidies when an employer hires a refugee, for example, they get uh, wage subsidies. So that's the way they are tackling this. Uh, I think uh, they are really reluctant to do anything about uh, ordinary wages. In, yeah. in a way, it's the same thing, because uh, employees should pay a bit less, and the rest will be subsidized yeah. by the yeah. state. Yeah.